Rainy days are so boring, Jessica. They sure are, Jason. We're stuck inside this library instead of outside, seeing the world. Libraries are so boring, Jessica. <gasps> Shh. Sorry. We really need to finish this homework about the history of our school. Read me what we've written so far, Jason. Jason! Sorry. Shh. Sorry. Benito Juarez Elementary is awesome. We've been going here all six years of our learning career, and we both agree it is Anaheim's finest elementary education establishment. It is located at 841 Sunkist Street. It was built in 1965 and has had over 10,000 students in the last 50 years. Jessica! Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. We're not even close to being done with our homework, but I don't know what else to write. I don't even know who Benito Juarez is. Shh. But I didn't say anything. Well, if you didn't do that, who did? The computer. The computer's not even plugged in. Whoa! Look, it says, who do you want to learn about? We want to learn about Benito Juarez. Okay, please press backspace, enter, and escape. Whoa! Where are we? Why are we cartoons? We must be inside the computer. All we said was we wanted to learn about Benito Juarez. Hola, ¿cómo estás? <gasps> Me llamo Benito Juarez. ¿Y tú? Uh, I don't know how to speak French. Oh, <laughs> well, since we are in a computer, I guess I can translate for you. So we are in a computer. Yes, we are. And uh, not French. I was speaking Spanish. Your Benito Juarez? Si! Sí, one of Mexico's most well-known national heroes. And you are... Frank, Kyle, Melvin, Austin. You can tell me when I'm close. Sorry, I'm Jessica. And I'm Jason. It's nice to meet you both. Welcome to Mexico. Wow, we're in Mexico. Well, a computer simulation of Mexico. Let me give you a tour. This is where I, Benito Pablo Juarez Garcia, was born in the city of San Pablo, Gualatao, Oaxaca, Mexico, in a small adobe house on March 21st, 1806. 1806? You don't look that old. <laughs> the computer shaves off a few hundred years. Anyways, it was here that I lived with my uncle after my parents passed away when I was very young. I worked in the fields and as a shepherd at the age of 12. 12 is Spanish for the number 12. My grandmother has taught me a little bit of Spanish. Muy bien, Jessica. You worked when you were only 12? Times were different when I was a kid. Back then, we didn't even have the fidget spinners, or the X-Play, or the Game Box, or even Nestle's. <gasps> One day, 12-year-old me decided to walk to the city of Oaxaca de Juarez to live with my sister so that I could attend school. While in Oaxaca de Juarez, I took a job as a domestic servant. Wow, you must have been really smart and hardworking. Thank you. Antonio Salanueva thought the same thing. He was a Franciscan friar who saw my potential as a future priest and entered me into the Santa Cruz Seminary, where I was taught the Bible, law, and the Spanish language. Like the word doce. I know Spanish now. Si. Sí. What does the letter C have to do with anything? C means yes in Spanish. <laughs> well, the seminary played a big role in how I learned Spanish. I am a full-blooded native of Zapotec descent, so my native language was Zapotec, not Spanish. Once I learned Spanish, I was able to further my education, and in 1834, I earned a degree in law from the Institute of Science and Art. You're smart. And hardworking. C. Si. C. Si. In 1847, I became involved in local politics as a city councilman, a judge, and earned a reputation as a defender of native rights. Not long after that, I was elected governor of the state of Oaxaca. It sounds like you had a really busy life. You have no idea.
As governor, I passed several laws which took away churches' funds and lands to limit their power, which angered the conservative government. That led to me being exiled and traveling to Cuba and New Orleans and working in cigarette factories until 1854, when Juan Alvarez launched an attack on the Capitol, made himself president, and declared me Minister of Justice, where I passed more laws limiting the church's power even further, which angered more conservatives like Felix Zuluaga, who overthrew the government and put me in prison in 1857 until I was released, declared war on Zuluaga, forced him out of office, and then I became the 26th president of Mexico. <sighs> Can you repeat that? Oh. No. Oh, and I almost forgot. What did that have to do with everything you just told us? Nothing! But no visit inside the magical computer is complete without watching a video of adorable baby kittens! They were pretty adorable. So, you became the 26th president of Mexico, and you lived happily ever after? Not quite. Things weren't so peachy during the Battle of Puebla. The Battle of what? You've never heard of the Battle of Puebla? How do I say no in Spanish? No. No. I'm getting good at this. The Battle of Puebla happened while I was president of Mexico. You see, years of war left my country in enormous debt to Britain, Spain, and France. Is debt another Spanish word? No, it's an English word that means we owe those countries a lot of money. France was especially not happy with us, so they sent French soldiers to the capital to take control of Mexico. But in 1862, Mexican soldiers under the command of Ignacio Zaragoza defeated the French at the Battle of Puebla, and each year, their victory is celebrated every May 5th. Cinco de Mayo. That's right, Cinco de Mayo. See, you know more Spanish than you think, Jason. See si and no. Anyway, in 1863, French troops still managed to find their way to the capital and overthrow me as president. But I never gave up in what I believed in, in the country I loved. And eventually, I was re-elected as president in 1867 and 1871. Wow, you were such a strong leader. And you never stopped fighting for the natives of Mexico, no matter what. Just like you both never gave up on getting your homework done. Speaking of, we need to get going so we can finish writing it. Thank you for showing us what an amazing leader our school is named after. You're very welcome. Oh, and one last thing. I wasn't going to show you a video of cute kittens without showing you a video of cute puppies too. Okay, adios amigos. Hasta luego. Adios. Wow, what an amazing experience. Can you believe we go to a school with such a rich history? And that Benito Juarez was one of Mexico's greatest leaders. And who knew that this whole time, our library had a magic, time-traveling computer. And we have enough information to finish our homework. Oh, and look, it stopped raining. Jason. <clears throat> Sorry. Shh. Sorry.